Hey fellow YouTubers, how's it going? I'm out here on uh, my favorite road, Mount Hermon Road. It's not a big secret. I don't really keep secrets from you guys as far as riding areas. Uh, I freely share those because this isn't like a secret area. Now there, there are areas that are more social trails and I forego showing those for obvious reasons. I think we're all guilty of going down not a quite legal path, kind of like a gray area, because it's so burned in, you don't really know, you know, if it's legal or not, if you don't know that particular uh, forest, but if you do, then good chance you know what works and what doesn't work. And it looks like it's a busy day. Give a nod. Figure. It's, it's a nice day. You got to expect that on nice days that people are just going to be out here and enjoying the public lands like you are. So, again, it's all about knowing your area and where, you know, what people are probably going to be doing on which days. thing I worry about is the downhill traffic, but it is early enough that a good chance there won't be too many downhill goers. See, I know my day. Now, if this was at the end of the day, there'd be people leaving the forest and they would be coming down. And I'd probably be going much, much slower because they tend to be going much faster because, you know, lo and behold, They've been out too long and they need to get home before the wife does or whatever the case might be, but they, they feel they have to get home right away. So they speed on down and, you know, and they're in a big F-350 and it's, it can get kind of scary at times when you see them coming around the corner. As you noticed, I will typically stay to the right, center and right, treat it like a normal road. You know, there's no line, but I hate those people that are like riding way over here when there's no need to be riding way over there. So, you know, stay pretty much far right in a lane. Now, if I can see up ahead, it's not a big of a deal or around the corner. You know, um, each case is different, but that's pretty much how you have to go about riding on roads that have popular car traffic. Uh, if you're probably ever noticed uh, when you're riding, you can pretty much tell when you're catching up to somebody because there will be dust in there. Like right now it's clear, so I mean, I'm not catching up to anyone yet. But that's when I know I will be around one of the corners or probably be somebody in their vehicle. And usually the dust gets heavier as you approach common sense, but I don't think a lot of people really think about it or talk about it. Here's a good example. We have some, we have a mountain biker. So what I do, I'm going to slow down as I approach, downshift, give a little wave and just kind of tool by. Don't try to throw up anything or create a huge dust cloud. I've seen so many rude motorcyclists where they just whiz by or they gun it right after they're by, but those guys are going so slow. <laughs> they're going to be sitting in your dust. It does not create a good experience for them, and it gives us a bad name. If I putz by, I'm not creating as much noise, not creating as much dust. They have a more enjoyable time. I do it in a safe manner. And there's dust in the air, so I'm gonna be catching up. Yep, there he is, right there. So 
So far, I've had very nice people. Thank you. Which is awesome because, uh, you know, you don't always get that. I'm going to assume he's probably some sort of a rider and he understands. Especially if he's an off-road rider. Being in dust just sucks when you don't have to be. <laughs> and same thing for hikers, you know, just kind of slow down, acknowledge them. Why do you acknowledge people? Because then they know you're not going to like run into them. Kind of like my little beef on the side of Gold Bar and Gemini Bridges where I was waiting for to be rescued in the from the brother-in-law and you know people didn't even give me eye contact and that goes for some OHVers. It's always best to give eye contact, a thumbs up, a wave or something because you know people tend to be shy even if they're broke down and somebody might be like well you know I'll, they'll, they'll ask me and then they don't and you're like uh, hmm, if you really need help don't be afraid to ask because otherwise then then if the people continue on and don't acknowledge you then you can really truly say what an asshole because <laughs> you just don't do that when you're in the middle of nowhere you always provide help if I came across somebody that had just slid off this cliff, my first thing would be to stop and help them, whether it's a rider or a car driver. That's what you do, you know? <laughs> and I've gone down these hills many times to look into vehicles to make sure no one was in them. It sucks, but, you know, <laughs> it's not like people tend to leave notes or anything that you can read and be like oh no one's in it it's like oh somebody in that did that just happen or has that been there for overnight you know, have they already been rescued or are they in there unconscious or dead so yes I have done that quite a few times now I would have a limit this is so steep I don't know if I could get down not in riding boots but I could stop and at least uh, you know see if I have a cell single go get help or somebody else at that point would maybe stop or I could flag down and say hey can you go get help I don't know if anyone's in here or you know it which still leaves me not knowing if they just call and the cops say yo <laughs> they're not gonna come back and tell me so I still wouldn't know I know I have cell signal here so it wouldn't be a big deal for me to call so again that's something know your areas yeah know your areas where you get cell signal if it's an area you ride a lot that that's easy to do obviously if you're just passing through and you haven't been there you're not going to have a clue um but you'll be surprised where you'll get our cell reception i mean remember all you need is to make a phone call you don't need to, to text or data or anything if you can make a a weak cell call you're probably okay obviously I don't rely just on my cell phone while out here I have a PLB on me and my PLB is my last resort now a lot of guys and gals like spots or in reach those type of tracking devices but I've heard horror stories of those at least for spots having issues and stop providing tracks but it's, it was on it seemed like it should be working and the person calls his loved one and they're like yeah it hasn't worked all, you know you haven't moved all day but because you didn't press a help button I figured you know you were okay so a lot of false sense of security with spots it's funny the people that jump on the spot bandwagon I personally didn't want the monthly subscription after buying a unit and a subscription that would go until you don't want that unit anymore so forever I'm tired of monthly subscriptions in life everything seems to be like a monthly subscription blah 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 you know um, that's why I got a PLB it was like two hundred and twenty dollars I believe for the Megura and I went with that one because after you really start thinking about it it's supposed to be for a last resort like if I can if I break a leg and I can still ride out, 
What am I going to do? I'm going to ride out. Hey, you don't want the flight for life, Bill. And no, search and rescue does not provide helicopter, ambulance service. They just provide you getting out of the, the area. And no, that does not mean for, you know, basically to come find your ass. That's what it provides. And now, depending on the area, they may or may not pick up some of that flight cost. It all depends. Um, I'm sure people uh, have many times had a fight for a huge helicopter bill. Because it's going to be huge. And most people, you just really can't afford that, even on a payment plan. Uh, yeah. You're saved, but it's like any medical expense or uh, thing like an ambulance. It's it's well marked up beyond what it probably should cost. And yes, I know helicopters do cost a lot to maintain and what have you. <laughs> My mother actually worked for an oil, a helicopter company that provided flights for uh, oil rigs when we lived in Texas at one point, and she did the. The parts, she kept track of hours on parts. So like each part has an hour. So say if a part has like a hundred hours and it was getting close to being replaced, she she kept track of all that stuff. Seriously? Like you're never gonna <laughs> People always will try to get away from you. It's like I just caught up to you. What asinine world do you live in that you're just going to be able to haul butt and get away from me? I mean, unless you're like, understand drifting and drift around these corners and go super nuts with speed, you're not going to get away from a motorcycle rider, uh, you know, uh, an average motorcycle rider. Maybe a new rider you, you could uh, pull away from. But yeah, anyways, I understand the cost of helicopters and whatnot, but I mean, I guess that's debatable. Like whether, you, is your life worth the $30,000? Well, yes, but at the same time, I don't have $30,000 just to hand over to you, and I'm not gonna have a monthly plan, so I bet they settle pennies on the dollar at the end of the day. Um, just like any medical expense, it's one of those things where it'd be stupid not to haggle. You'd be stupid to be like, hey, I can't. Even if you had 30,000, you'd be like, hey, I don't have that. Uh, I got 10 grand. That's what I can give you or whatever the case might be. And they're going to probably say yes, because they rather get something than nothing. And that's just the same as hospitals, doctors, all that good stuff. So I won't get into that anymore, but it is what it is. Where do you guys want to go today? That's the real key. Oh, somebody's parked at my play rock. I don't know. Let's for fun go down there. Hey.
Do, do, do. This is the slowest I've ever gone back here. It's kind of a weird spot to come ride for the day. I just came back here because I wondered what they were doing. <laughs> 